Yes, we can hear you. We can okay. hear you. Clearly. Okay. Okay. Yeah, please um, mute yourself so that we won't have uh, this uh, distraction. We have started and uh, the recording is on, so we are starting now. And uh, we'll go. Um, this is the um, table of content of what we are trying to achieve. What we are going to do, we are going to take it um, topic by topic um, till we finish the whole uh, process, the whole content, which is the course, uh, is a module, um, project management. Uh, this is the first thing we are dealing with. We are going to otaku project management. After project management, then we then move to business analysis. So, and I'm looking at achieving this uh, project management within this week. I'm looking at if we can finish up this uh, slide uh, within this week. And then next week, then we move to um, business analysis. Uh, there is a lot of things we need to do. So we have to be as fast as we can. And uh, if, if you look at our table of content, the first thing is general introduction. We are starting today, so we might introduce ourselves, although um, I need to introduce myself properly. And I will want few of you, I will choose randomly, like uh, four people to represent you and uh, intro, uh, say something. And then we, we progress, because if everybody here uh, we want to introduce uh, him or herself, it's going to take time. So I'll just randomly give a few people a chance to talk and then we go into the the proper thing uh, uh, for the day. So I will start by <clears throat> introducing myself. Uh, my name is Charles, Charles Ugu. I'm a Nigerian, I'm from Enugu State and uh, I, I'm based here in the UK, in London. Uh, where I practice as a consultant, as a business analyst, as a project manager, as a developer, as a software engineer. So this is what I do. And uh, I've worked for so many organizations, uh, so many uh, industries, uh, telecoms, um, health sector, government sector i've worked in so many uh, of these sectors and it has given me the experience you know needed to manage project very well and uh, uh, analyze um, a company uh, problem and profile solutions so and this is what i've been doing for for a long time and at this at this point in time I spotted this uh, <clears throat> this gap in our society, or uh, where a lot of people graduates we graduate and uh, they will start looking for a job, and I'm not happy about it. Uh, so that's why I've decided that something has to be done. We need to solve this problem, and someone need to solve the problem, and this is what I'm uh, uh, trying to do. Uh, this is the first set of people that we are enrolling in this uh, our school, and uh, we expect much from you because you are going to be an ambassador. You need to represent us very well. You need to to preach. You need to go out to tell people what you've seen. It's going to be a collective effort. It's going to be our team. It's not going to be my team. It's not going to be Charles Ugo's team. It's for all of us. We need to transform our society. We need to... Um, we need, don't need to wait for government anymore. Uh, I'm not the type that I like complaining. I like doing things, solving the problems. 
not complaining. And as we are here, that's the, the, the goal. We need to solve our problems. We need to create jobs for ourselves. And uh, we need to uh, start up companies for ourselves, for our children, and for the next generation. So we are here to solve problems. So like uh, some people might say, uh, there is a saying that uh, uh, you've come to, to fetch water and you discovered a stream. This is what is happening here. We might just come here to train as a, a project manager or a business analyst to get the experience that can help you get a remote job. But it's more than that. For you to be here means that um, the society wants you uh, to contribute to your own effort in changing our society. So uh, that is uh, uh, whom I am and that is my goal for for setting up this uh, school, which um, all of us are going to be ambassador to drive this change. Uh, this program is um, a hybrid program. You hardly find this program anywhere, even in any, you can't find it in any university. So we are trying to find something, we're trying to do things differently from what um, they have been doing. Uh, we're trying to bring project management and business analysis together so that after training, you create more uh, opportunity for you, uh, give you more, more knowledge. Because if you have been trained as a, as, a, as a project manager, I believe there are something will be lacking because most of the time the project managers uh, works with business analysts. And when you are trained as a project manager and as a business analyst, you'll be going to, it's going to be more effective for you to collaborate with your business analyst or to collaborate with your project manager or to, to swap roles, to move from one role to another, you become more uh, productive. You become more scalable. You become uh, 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 very valuable, a valuable asset to your organization. And this is the reason we are combining it. They are highly uh, related. In IT industry, we, uh, pro, you, you can't do, a project manager cannot do with um, a business analyst. And business analyst cannot do with a, a project. So they work hand in hand. So we are doing this to give you more opportunity, give you more insights, more knowledge to, to break the barrier. Because we want you to break the barrier. We are not going to be. We are not going to be happy. Yeah, please mute yourself. Uh, if you are the one that is unmuting yourself, please uh, mute yourself. Uh, there is a noise coming from the background. Whoever is there, that prayer is coming from that background. Prayer is good, but uh, we are here in um, a live session. We are. Sorry, I was going to say, is it possible? Uh, you uh, so sorry, uh, so sorry, Mon, please uh, mute yourself or I will throw you out of this class.
So that's the the roadmap for this program. It's going to give you um, a double blessing. So at uh, this point, I will want somebody uh, like, uh, let's say, uh, three people from the uh, from the group, from you people, to just say something, and then we carry on. This is the um, introductory session. I want us to have a formal introduction before we start uh, uh, cracking on. Can you hear me? Yes. It's going to be an interactive session. I don't want to be talking to myself alone. Okay, let me start by introducing myself then. My name is Bosse Diada Kumola. I work um, in an international organization as a user support uh, officer. Um, I have IT4 certification and uh, with two certification so it would be nice for me to upskill by learning um business analyst and project management i'm happy to be part of this class and thank you so much for for this great opportunity thank you thank you hey, so, sir, uh, raymond i want you to say something Okay, Namani Chimwendo. Okay, good evening, all. My name is Namani Chimwendo. I work in a printing press. I'm also an upcoming freelance, being able to work remotely. So I am happy for this uh, great opportunity that has been given to us by Mr. Charles to be in this class. And I look forward to getting more skills that will enable me to be a very good and skilled remote worker. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, you want to you don't want to say something. Okay. Um, let me tell you one thing. You know, most of you here are aspiring to work remotely. Working remotely, okay, somebody's raising hand. Okay, the person raising his hand should say something. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Jama. everyone. Yes, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Ijoman Charam. I am a customer support specialist. For, Hello. Um, can you hear me? Hello. Can Hello? you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hello? Hello. We can hear you. Yes, yeah, yeah, somebody. Okay. Um, my name is Leticia Oliver. I I live in New Nigeria. I'm a pharmacist, and um, I'm consulting with an NGO that gives care to people living with HIV and AIDS. I am um, currently looking to make a career shift to IT. And um, I'm exploring freelancing. So I'm hoping that um, this class will, uh, through this class, I will acquire some of the skills that will um, enable, me, enable me to succeed in my 
new career. Thank you. Okay. That's good. You are in the in the right place. Okay. Um. Thank you. I uh, think these people have uh, represented the whole class very well. And uh, one thing I want to tell you is that uh, when I'm starting uh, my IT career, I didn't know anything. Uh, you know, I, I was very confused when I started. But today is a different story. So it's all about dedication, commitment, and hard working. You know, and with all these things, you can do it. Um, I studied the banking and finance, so it's not like I studied IT. I studied banking and finance and started, you know, training and upskilling myself. And now I, be, I become a a full fledged uh, a software engineer. So anyone can do it. So let's. Um, crack on, and we've uh, wasted a lot of time trying to wait for people um, to join. Alpha. Although, although we, we, we don't still... Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, please um, uh, mute yourself. So we are going to start by looking um, into, into the um, project management itself proper. We are going to start by looking at the definition, the growth of uh, uh, project management uh, factors for uh, creating projects, importance of project management absence of uh, uh, project management and its consequences and the uh, characteristics and features of a good uh, uh, project management. Uh, the first thing is we are going to look at uh, the definition from the um, PMI Institute. Uh, that is a project management institute. It's, uh, uh, one of the highest body um, globally in terms of project management. And most of the principle we are going to be using, which I've been using uh, for a long time and is working for me, uh, is coming from this uh, institute. And uh, we have um, a project management body of knowledge, which we use like uh, a reference point, a kind of authority in project management. So a lot of things we are doing is coming from there. So I am uh, adopting their definition. There are so many definitions of project management. We are not going to start looking at all the definitions. We know um, what, uh, where every definition is um, uh, gearing towards. So we just adopt one definition and then we move on. According to PMI, a project management is the application of knowledge, skills, tools, and techniques to project activities to meet the project requirement. Project management is accomplished through the appropriate application and integration of the project management processes identified for the project. Project management enables organization to execute projects effectively and uh, efficiently. That's the, the definition PMI gives to the project management and is a well um, accepted definition uh, globally. So that is what we are going to be working on as our uh, definition of uh, project management. 
the next thing we'll look at is the growth of uh, project management. Project management uh, is uh, the growth is, uh, is is very fast. It's on a on a very fast lane. Uh, according to the uh, statistics, it is expected that employers will need around it's 7.7 .7 million projects, uh, project management professionals by 2027. The Bureau of Statistics, uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics predict that the, the fastest growth rate for project managers in IT is 12% um, faster than the average for all the occupation. Why is it growing? Uh, at this rate, as you know, if you are in the IT industry, uh, all you'll be hearing every 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 time is a digital transformation, digital transformation. There are this uh, digital transformation madness. IT is growing very fast. You know, companies are trying to to cope with the the, the challenges of uh, IT growth. And if you don't cope, your competitors will push you out of the market. Now, a lot of companies are now moving on the cloud. Before, it used to be uh, on-premise application. That's what most companies use. But now, every company is going to the cloud because it's more scalable. It's better to do business from the cloud uh, than to do business... Uh, uh, from the on-premise server, the, the, some of the benefits of uh, moving to the cloud is what we are doing now. You know, we are able to collaborate globally uh, because of uh, cloud applications. If, if, if there is no cloud applications, it would be very difficult for us to be having this uh, live session. But this is what is triggering project management. There is a lot of technologies. Before, we don't have blockchain. Blockchain is coming with uh, its own transformation, uh, driving change, driving more projects. Uh, machine learning. We don't have. We don't used to. We don't have machine learning before. But now there is machine learning everywhere. Most companies are trying to make. Uh, uh, tap from the benefits of machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence, all these uh, applications, all these technologies, this was driving the growth uh, rate in project management. You know, every now and then, companies trying to either to, to implement one solution or to uh, uh, improve on the solution or to update the solution. So you can see there's constant growth constant growth and that's why there is the there is high need for project managers you continue to grow because we don't know where these uh, technologies are taking us so that's why is this is the best time to get yourself onboarded not just as a project manager but as an IT professional is very very the the need for IT professionals uh, is too much so and that's why these days you can see companies are now beginning to to look beyond just a geographic recruiting from one geographical area most companies are now trying to recruit globally because if you for instance here in uk if you want to recruit from uk there are few the the, the the number of project manager or IT professionals in UK is not enough to cater for the job need. So if companies need to, 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 to do well, they need to look beyond the UK. The same thing with US. So they have to, to look for elsewhere to look to, to look for, for labor. And this is creating opportunities for, for, for us in the in the third uh, world countries. So if you if you can uh, package yourself 
and getting as a project manager at this point in time, you won't be complaining there is no job. What we, be, what we are seeing these days is lack of skills, not a lack of job. There is job opportunities, but it's the scale that we don't have. And this is the reason we are here. To give you this skill, you need to go out there and uh, break the barrier. Um, this course is very good because uh, it's going to give you um, real-life work experience, unlike what we get from so many institutions these days. Uh, this is the main thing about this uh, uh, project that personally that I love. So uh, this is the reason why there is high growth, high growth rate in the uh, project management and the uh, IT industry. Um, some of the factors uh, for creating projects, we're going to look at it briefly, like uh, I've mentioned a lot already, is the new technologies. Because of a uh, high rate of uh, technology, new technologies, like I said, blockchain, um, artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning. These are these are new technology. We don't used to have all this technology before. They are all new technologies, and this is why there is um, there is high rate of uh, more projects springing up. Another one is a competitive force. If you don't scale up, if you don't like I, other companies are scaling up using digital technology, better technology. If you don't uh, scale up your business, you'll be competition. Uh, the market competition will swallow you. So another one is material issue, you know, and uh, another one is political issue. Uh, there's um, another one is market demand. Market demand is another key issue that is driving uh, uh, pro more projects in IT industry. The market is uh, there is huge uh, demand in the market, you know, because of these new technologies. Another one is economic change. This economic change triggers. Um, uh, uh, more more projects like now we, we, economically you've seen uh, digital currencies everywhere is part of the economic change and these are some of the things that are triggering a uh, uh, more project customers request you know these days customers demand is becoming too much customers unlike before that companies will just produce something and impose it on customer. It, it doesn't apply uh, like that uh, this time around. Customers are the king. Customers di uh, they dictate the tune these days. If you don't do what your customers want, they can easily uh, move to another platform. For instance, you can see uh, Facebook, Twitter, um, and the TikTok. If Facebook... Um, uh, if customers want something and Facebook don't, do, they see everybody will just move to to Twitter or everybody will move to to TikTok. So these are customers. Customers will always demand them more. Unlike customers these days have realized um, themselves that they are the king, and you don't want to lose your customers because if you lose a customer. The customer will make a bad um, a bad review of your product, and the knock-on effect is that you lose more customers. So everybody is now trying to protect customers' interests. That's why we're having more projects. Companies these days are spending a lot of money trying to understand their customer's journey. Customer's journey is what are the things the customers want? In your product, how do they interact with their product? What is their challenges? Companies try to understand, try to understand customers' journey requires 
um, sophisticated uh, technologies like uh, SAP hybrids and uh, the rest of them. So when you when you, you come into uh, business analysis, you are going to meet a lot of applications. Uh, that's why we are going to we'll be discussing all these applications like uh, SAP, uh, Microsoft, uh, um, Salesforce. All these applications, we are going to discuss about them when we come to uh, uh, business analysis. Another one is uh, um, stakeholder demand. You know, these days, uh, as a business, as a as a project manager, you'll be hearing about stakeholders a lot. Stakeholders, they are they are they are they are very terrible people in project management. So you must learn how to manage them. You know, that's stakeholders. So it's all, all, in, in project management and business analysis, it's all about stakeholders management. You need to be um, know how to play play the, uh, the the project policies. We call it project policies. How to win your stakeholders because they can make you you lose your job. You can you can delay your projects. That's stakeholders for you. So these are some of the things. And the stakeholders, these are the the, the people that have got vested interest in the in the companies. They always demanding for one thing or the other. So. In order to satisfy them, we're always looking at more projects, doing one thing or the other to satisfy them. Another thing that triggers uh, um, uh, project is uh, legal regulations. Legal regulation means that uh, government can change their policies. And uh, when government change policies, you see companies will start running up and down uh, you know, to, to meet up with the regulation. Uh, for instance, um, in the uh, in, uh, UK um, or in EU, there's a time, there's uh, this issue of uh, data protection. There's no legal, much legal requirement about data protection. But over the, the years, this issue of uh, GDPR um, I come of where company need to, you know, uh, protect service users uh, data you need to specify how you use people's uh, information it's one of the big problem that uh, facebook uh, uh, fall into and uh, up to date they are still working hard on coming out of that problem so this government regulation and for companies to 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 to, to be able to do that they need to implement a lot of uh, uh, projects they need to re, uh, uh, rebuild their their their, their solutions to reflect on how they, they use customers' uh, 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 data. So this is some of the area where legal regulation and legal requirement um, triggers a project. Another one is uh, uh, business process improvement. Business process improvement is a situation where organization uh, is always uh, trying to improve on the way they, uh, they do things in the organization, uh, operationally, uh, even in the production level. So these are the things that triggers uh, uh, a project. For instance, in the business process improvement, company, uh, companies these days are uh, not only trying to, to, to win customers, they are trying to reduce uh, overhead costs. They are trying to, to reduce operational costs. And this is where lean methodology in project management comes in. Lean methodology and uh, uh, Six Sigma. Uh, these uh, two methodology is the pros, is the is the, the, the methodology where companies, if you know how to, to, to use lean very well or you are Six Sigma certified. You are not going to look for, for, for work because companies will be looking for you everywhere. So these are um, some of the things that uh, um, uh, triggers uh, uh, projects. Like one of the projects I handled um, not quite long ago is a robotic process automation. Robotic process automation is process improvement where 
implement um, robotic process, automating uh, workflow. So many things that uh, we do manually, we automate, we automate it, and um, it helps to reduce um, uh, error. For instance, when you are data flow or data management before, it used to be hand, manual, handled manually. But when it gets automated, the, 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 the bots will be handling it, cleaning it, um, all the requirements, making sure there is no error. And these are some of the things co co companies, organizations, um, they're always looking at all these um, factors that will scale their business. Another one is a strategic opportunity of business. Companies are always looking for strategic moves, a competitive advantage. These are some of the things equally uh, triggers uh, projects. Another one is a social need. Every company now wants to be noticed in the social industry, in the social world. If you are not in um, um, a company, don't have a page in Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter, you've not started. So you need to have a page. When you have a page, you need to pro uh, promote your, your company. These are some of the things that triggers projects. So things that triggers projects are many. And the, all these projects are IT projects. And that's why we have so many opportunities uh, in the industries. Um, at this point... At this point, um, we are going to look at uh, the importance of uh, project management. Um, effective project management helps individual groups and, and the public and private organization to meet business objectives, satisfy uh, stakeholder expectation, be more predictable, increased chances of success. And most of the things here is something uh, I've already mentioned, you know, but I just wanted to atomize it so that uh, it will be atomized. We'll, we'll look at it in a, uh, this, but most of the things here is the things uh, we've uh, just uh, finished uh, talking about, like uh, you deliver the, the right product to the right uh, uh, at the right time, it's very good to deliver the, the right product because you might have a right product and you deliver it at the wrong time and it becomes a problem for you. Uh, you know, these are the things that uh, happened with uh, Nokia and that's why Nokia, Nokia um, uh, gone home uh, today. No Nokia used to be number one, um, number, number one, um, uh, telephone uh, in a mobile telephone but what happened is that uh, 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 Nokia's uh, uh, time to market we call it time to market in agile methodology is call it time to market time to market is when you plan your project that your project will, uh, or your product will be in the market at the right time and that's why uh, 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 Nokia failed. Nokia failed because Nokia is using um, waterfall methodology. Waterfall methodology is a process whereby you package your, uh, you manage your, you plan your product um, or your, your, your project sequentially. That uh, every uh, uh, tax is uh, dependent on another. So if you change anything or when after uh, approving a project, you don't. Uh, it's very rigid that you. It's very difficult to amend uh, a, a project when a project have uh, started, and uh, this is rigid methodology is what uh, Nokia have been using. They don't look at customers' uh, need. You know, once they've uh, decided that this is what we want, they will make sure that they produce it to the last before they take it to the market, and. Uh, their competitor, which is Apple. When Apple uh, came in, Apple, Apple studied the, um, the customers very well, and they realized that the only way to, to hold the market is 
try to satisfy the customers, give them what they want at all times. And Apple started, that's why we started Apple, Apple, one Apple, two Apple, three iPhone, one iPhone, two iPhone, three. So that's how Apple, Apple used the agile methodology. We are coming um, to that later on. So Apple started using agile methodology to, to manage um, um, their product. And that's why they, they've been able to hijack the, the, the market. And every other companies uh, started copying um, uh, Apple's uh, success story. And that's uh, the reason um, uh, why time to market, deliver the right project at the right time. That's why it's very important. Uh, good uh, project management resolves uh, issue, uh, pr uh, problems and issue. If you manage your project very well, you will not have problems. You will not have any issue because uh, you use um, a good uh, risk analysis um, to make sure that there is no problem when when you are using a, a managing problem a project very well with risk, uh, good risk management. You won't have any problem. You won't have any issue. You always resolve your problem. You resolve your issue very well. We are coming to risk management later on. Now, respond to risk uh, in a timely manner, which I've just said. Minimize the use of uh, organizational resources. As a good project man uh, manager, you must utilize your resources very well. For instance, if... Uh, if uh, 5,000 pounds is being approved for you uh, to build a, a company website, you must make sure that uh, you don't exceed that uh, uh, 5,000 as a good project manager. So, and again, if it's the, 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 the company wants the, the website to be live in four months, you have to deliver. So you have to deliver on time and on budget. That's what makes you a good uh, project uh, manager. Delivery on time and on budget. So we are coming to all those things later because we are going to use all those things during your work uh, experience. Um, another one is optimize the use of organization. I have just said that identify, recover, terminate falling project. Yes. if. That's why agile methodology in project management is very good. It's not very steep. When a project um, is no longer um, uh, a product you are producing is no longer oops, is is, uh, is no longer in trend is trending is it becomes obsolete. There is need to close that project. You know. So that you, you you reduce the amount of loss um, you, you 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 get from that pro, uh, project. Another one is a terminate uh, failing project, just like what I said. Some projects uh, you find out that you cannot continue terminate the project. So these are some of the 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 the, the, the reason why you should uh, use uh, project uh, management in managing your project. You don't ju you don't just uh, uh, start a project and they uh, just start a uh, money. You need to apply principles that will guide you in managing um, your, your project. Other things is a uh, uh, constraints. Constraints is uh, when, uh, when we talk about scope, scope management. We are coming to scope management. That's where you see constraints. Constraints are the, the cost, the resources, the time. Good project management methodology will help you to manage your project scope very well. So you won't go out of budget, you won't go out of time, and that will gain you a rep good reputation in your organization. If you if you are saving money for them, everybody, every organization, they want people that will save money for them. Uh, balance the influence of uh, constraints on the uh, uh, project. Increased scope may cost, uh, um, it cost more money. So when you when you 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 manage your project very well, 
this issue of uh, scope creep, which we are going to come in later, you won't fall into scope creep. Is if you are very soon, you you understand that you're hearing a lot about scope creep, because scope creep is the most things that uh, destroys projects. This is the most one of the the, uh, the the most dangerous things in project management. People can easily go out of scope. If you don't manage stakeholders very well, they are most of the people that will drag you into scope. So when you are managing projects very well, applying all this uh, principle like um, stakeholders management, risk management, and there's no way you won't be able to manage your scope very well. So manage um, a change. Change, a good project manager should be able to manage change. In organization, people don't like change. You know, a lot of people prefer to be in their comfort zone. But most of the time, comfort zone don't bring more, more money, doesn't bring profit. You know, so when you are trying to implement a project or managing a project, you need to manage change. You see a lot of people, you know, trying to, to, to make sure that that project uh, it doesn't work because they don't want change. They don't want to move from one uh, place to the, the next. Like when I was implementing this uh, uh, robotic process automation, so many people do not understand what robotic process automation. They would think that when you implement robotic process automation, they will send them home. They will lose their job. Be that a uh, robot is now taking their job. So they will find in every little opportunity within their reach to make sure that um, the, that project doesn't work. So you need to manage them. The way you manage them, you need to sensitize them. Let them know the importance of that uh, project, the benefit. And that's how you manage change very well. The absence of um, uh, project management. Poorly managed projects or absence of project management result in a, a missed deadline, cost overrun, poor quality, rework, uncontrolled expansion of the project, loss of reputation for the organization, unsatisfied stakeholders, and failure in achieving the objectives for which the project was undertaken. Uh, these are the things I've uh, just finish explaining. So it's very glaring, it's very obvious uh, that uh, project management is very useful, it's very important in managing projects. So many people don't manage their projects using project management. So that's why project managers are very good. They are high demand everywhere. We manage projects every time. Every morning when you wake up in the morning to go to work and come back is a project. You cook your food is a project. You go to market to buy something for the family is a project. If you don't manage your, your, your shopping, you go to the market and you start buying rubbish. You start seeing uh, fine, fine dresses, fine, fine shoes, you know, fine, fine um, hair attachment and with on. Instead of the money you used to buy uh, food condiment, use it to buy uh, uh, with one. When you come back home, you realize that you messed up. It's because you didn't manage the project, the shopping project very well. So that is the importance of project management. It's very good. Then we've been talking about project management project. What are the characteristics of a good project? What are the features of a good Project, um, uh, a good project, a good project management. Good project has a beginning and an end. You must have a beginning. Like when you are planning your project, and some of these um, project management tools, which you will be using very soon, like uh, Microsoft uh, Project and the Project uh, Libra. The first thing they'll ask you the, to do is when you put the beginning, you put the end. And that's how you initiate 
the planning of the project. It's very important for every project. You can't, uh, uh, you can't manage a project uh, indefinitely. It doesn't happen. You must have an, uh, a definite end from the time you are. You must know when you are ending this project. Even if the project doesn't happen not to end at that time, you know that uh, something happened. It's a, uh, a change. You've, uh, you've, uh, it's a scope creep which you have to document very well before your project will overrun. You need to document it and get a um, relevant approval from the, uh, the your line manager or the relevant authority. It must be approved. If you are mean to run a project for, like uh, this course is going to be four months pro, uh, projects. If you are going beyond four months, then there must be a genuine reason why we should uh, do this course for more than uh, um, four months because people have things they plan to do with their time. You can't just uh, bring them here and keep them here forever. A project is temporal in nature, just like uh, you must have a time bound. It's temporal. It's not uh, indefinite. It must come to an end one day. Stakeholder management is an essential part of a project. You cannot do without stakeholders. No, you can't. So you must learn how to manage your stakeholders. You need to, to do the policies. You need to study them. We have a lot of uh, tools. All these things have their tools used to manage them. Uh, stakeholders management, you have uh, uh, a lot of tools, stakeholder influence grid, uh, stakeholder register, um, where you need to uh, uh, plot all of them and then be watching them. You know, these are some of the things. Racing matrix. These are some of the tools we use uh, in managing stakeholders. We are coming to that. A project should be well defined and structured. You must have a project plan. You can't just uh, managing a project without a plan. A project must have a structured plan, uh, which is uh, uh, approved. It must be approved by the line management, the relevant authorities. They must approve the uh, your plan before you commence. A project must involve a team of people with essential skill. When you're managing a project, you must make sure that the people uh, that their project is their duty as a project manager. They evaluate their skills. Uh, make sure that their skills is commensurate with the uh, uh, what you are producing, the products or the project you are managing. You can't just uh, bring a, a, a square peg in a, a round. It doesn't work. They must be skilled. And most of the time, we have a uh, cross functional team most uh, in most uh, IT projects like we have uh, the developers we have a test tester we have a business analyst we have project manager we have a PMO analyst so these are some of the the relevant skills the relevant team members that to make up a project team a project must be unique in nature. Every project have a purpose. So that makes them unique. There is a particular problem each uh, project is trying to solve. A wedding event is different from um, going to market for shopping. They are quite two different things. That's their unique nature. You can be managing a wedding, uh, a wedding project like um, a shopping uh, house shopping project. The next one is um, project management rule. I think um, at this point in time, I need to hear from the class to know whether you people are following. I hope uh, you guys are following me. We are. Yeah. 
Yeah, the class is very interesting. Please write them. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we are following her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good to it's good to um to hear your voice. Like when you are only you talking and talking, and you feel like maybe they, uh, they are sleeping. And they, but like now I've heard your voice, I feel I feel mo I feel motivated. If you are the one, if you are, if, if the noise is coming from, if the hello, it, okay, please mute yourself. Thank you. Yeah, what we'll be looking now is um, the roles, project management roles. You know, in project management, it's not only a project manager. You might just think that once you 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 are a good, you, you've been trained as a project manager, you train them in project management, you become it. There are so many roles in project management, you know. So we're going to lose. One of them is a project manager, which uh, that's what all of you is now aspiring to become. You are going to be a project manager after this uh program believe me after managing the project after managing the projects that you, are, you, you guys are going to money you know about project management very well <clears throat> so <clears throat> all of you are going to be project managers but the good thing with it that if you cannot be a project manager there's other things you can do after this uh, program you can be a pmo analyst which is still a very powerful Post in project uh, management industry. PMO is a project management officer. Project management officer is different from project manager. The role of a project management officer is that they are the police of the project. They, they make sure that the project manager is doing what he should be doing. And the, the project manager uh, is delivering uh, quality content and Uploading all the project documents into the project repository and making sure there is a, a good housekeeping within the project. That's the, the, the duty of a PMO. They organize the project, they, they package the everything about documentation of the project. So their, their role is very important. Uh, we have a project coordinator. A project coordinator is not a project manager coordinate change for the project, like in large companies like uh, Microsoft, Google. A project manager cannot do everything. You might be having a big project. You trying to track the project is not easy. You think that project management is not easy. That's why there are so many tools to, to manage. So they create all these other rules to help project managers. The project coordinator will be doing their own coordinating the project planning, and, and these are the things that help project move faster. But in a small company, you as a project manager, you do everything. You become the project manager, you become the PMO, you become the coordinator. You even become the business analyst, you know? So in small company, because small company, they like using people. So another one is um, project support officer. Project support officer uh, is there to make sure that uh, the project manager, anything the project team wants, if a, a lack of knowledge, if the, 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 the team requires uh, training or anything, the project support, just like the name officer, is there. You know, become a link between project manager and other aspect of um, uh, support that the project require is just giving support. Another one is change manager. Like when I, I was talking about change, change management. Change in organization is not easy. You know, when you are trying to achieve something, 
you find out there are some people that are vehemently opposing that it cannot happen. It's the change manager. That's why over time, this uh, has uh, uh, killed so many projects in BB 